Ladies. So, is that ice cream? No, it resumed. Let me tell you a story. When I was three years old, I started to learn a foreign language. My mom spent five whole days trying to teach me one simple word, ice cream. I still remember how it was difficult for me to incorrectly repeat over and over again this one word. At that moment, that was when my parent realized there is something different with me. And at that moment, I need my new friend, resilience. Today, I'm 29, I speak three languages, Ice cream is my favorite word and one of my favorite foods. I finish regular primary and secondary school and university. I have masters in psychology. I'm an activist and trainer for human rights and people with disabilities. I have significant experience working with many international and local organizations in promoting and improvement of human rights and people with disabilities. I started to learn sign language since I was 23. And last year, together with my friend, I created an online platform for sign language here in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Why am I bragging about me? To show off? Yes. What you may or may not realize by now is that, that I'm a hard of hearing person with 93% of hearing impairment. I can hear hog frequencies, which are mostly presented in our everyday life. I can hear deep frequencies, as well as some part of deep frequencies that normal people can't hear. In verbal communication, I lip read most of the time. You are probably wondering what, how, why. Yes, it's true. You can ask my mom, she is here, or uh, my former teammate, they are here as well. Now, the reason I'm here is to share with you some examples from my life and to show you how having differences and being united in diversity could be useful and helpful for everyone. The key to this, learning from experience, making it work for you, building resilience. The car ride. I drive a car. When I do this, I need to look in front of me to drive carefully like everyone else. If someone sits next to me, I can hear and understand what he or she says. As you know, it could be very dangerous while driving a car to look at a person next to me. But I found a solution. Friends who sit with me in my car, they often sit on the back seat so I can see their lips on the rear-view mirror. This way, I can follow their talk and drive at the same time. If I don't drive, I usually prefer to sit behind the passenger seat. So when someone sits uh, on, the, on the passenger seat, he doesn't need to turn back to speak with me, I can see and read their lips by using right rear view. I found this solution when I was a child. My mom often sat on the passenger seat, and my dad was the driver. This was the perfect position for me because I was able to see and read dad's lips from his profile, and mom's lips from right rear view. Situation two, pajama party. Once, a long time ago, I had a pajama party with my girlfriend, and we turned off 
this is light. They started to talk about something, and I couldn't hear them. Actually, I could hear their voices, but I wasn't able to see their face, faces because of the dark, so I couldn't recognize and understand any word they say. Then came my first reaction was, turn on the light, I can't even hear you. <laughs> and now, when it's dark in the room, balcony, club, anywhere, we often use mobile phone to light up the places around us. But sometimes, friends of mine, if they want to say something directly to me, spontaneously, they shine their mobile light on my face, <laughs> which is unnecessary. They should shine on their face because I can hear myself. Next situation is in the club. So, this is, you can imagine, a typical club. Music is loud, too many people around, too much noises. Some cute guy comes to meet and talk with me. Nice. When people talk in a noisy room, they often prefer to talk directly to the ear. So, his head is here. And I do always, I always do this. Trying to see his lips and trying to understand and hear him. And his head is still here. After he says, this my body position, then comes his reaction. Is something wrong with your neck? No, clearly not. I just need to see his lips move. Again, situation in the club. Again, a typical club, music is loud, so many people around, too much noise. I'm talking with someone. He or she is in front of me. I'm very focused, thinking and trying to understand what he or she says. And then comes Direction. Do I have something on my teeth? Or, why are you looking at my lip that way? Do you want to kiss me? <laughs> sometimes yes, sometimes no, you know. Sometimes mom and get lost. <laughs> okay, next situation, next example. Raining trail. Last summer, I was a volunteer on a raining trail. My task was to wait for the for a runner at the finish and to give them a medal. There were three types of trail with different lights, marked by colors, red, green, and blue. I wasn't able to see when runner come to the finish from which trail he or she came. That was very important to know because there were two types of medals for every trail and every color. Another volunteer stood on the other side of the race headquarters and she was looking for the incoming runners and screaming to me the colors of the trail. I couldn't hear her. Again, she was too far and I wasn't able to see her lips. At one point, she had enough and she asked, how do you say these colors in sign language? And from that point, we used sign language for better communication. And it turned out to be very practical and very useful and probably it will be future practice, uh, it will be practice for future trials. Whispering. As you maybe can guess, I'm not good at whispering. I can't imagine and be sure if I'm too loud or too quiet. I remember before a test at primary school, 
Friends of mine say, I really appreciate your wish to help me with the test, but please don't. Every time you try, you get us both into trouble. When you whisper, you are too loud. Everyone in the room can hear, except you. <laughs> But when they wanted to help me, they didn't have even to whisper. It's enough just to clearly move their lips. If it isn't fair, right? <laughs> And let me come with the music. I like the songs. I like singing. I like movies, music, sports, like any young person today. When I was younger, I was wondering how people learn in such a simple way words of song just by hearing them. By listening by myself, I couldn't, I can't even recognize a, a song, any word from a song. So before the internet, I asked my younger sister for every song it seemed likable to write for me the word of the song on a paper. And then she had to show me when singer start to sing and when he, she ends. In the beginning, it was very difficult for me. I used to sit and learn, learn, repeat over and over again, just like the word ice cream, until I memorized all the words in my head. It was a huge process. After memorizing the word, I needed to train myself to recognize the memorized word in the song. When I completely prepare myself for this song, later I was able to recognize that song and its work anytime. And later, internet introduced a lyrics, and it was so amazing. No one was more excited than me when I discovered an option to find a text of my new favorite song. Okay, maybe my sister was more excited. <laughs> that means that I was finally able to learn every song of a singer of a band and to go a concert and enjoy music and dancing and singing like everybody else. Everybody else. What is the point of my story? Okay, I have some kind of hearing impairment. And it doesn't mean necessary that I need to miss out every little thing and action that comes with sound. Terminology that is often used is people with special needs. We all have special needs. Someone needs to go to the gym three times per week. Someone needs to drink four coffees per day. But hearing is not my special need. I have the same need as anyone in the world, the same need to hear as anyone in the world. But the difference is, uh, regarding my disability, I fulfill my hearing need in line with my abilities which led me to gain and create adaptable skills. I have the same need as other students to hear what professor says, what my friend says. I need to hear a song, to walk, to live. We all have some kind of differences in comparison to other people. It could be a disability, it could be an unusual characteristic in our behavior, uh, personality, things you love or not, uh, different ideas, different attitudes about something, different life experience and different life stories, at least. So, first, we need to be aware of this fact and accept it. 
After that comes the resilience building process, when we become aware of possibilities and tools that surround us. And that makes us more ready to take part in the society and the way we choose. The right way for a person like me, or anyone. So the way that we choose is right for us. For anything in your life, if, if you have a strong enough desire, you can find a way to overcome any challenge using your ability and skills. Uh, uh, at the same time, if when we get in the, in the process to know ourselves and other differences, sorry, we, are, we are ready to accept each other. And then when we are familiar with each other's differences, then come the main advantage of diversity. Being united allows everyone to contribute to the community and the society. And then society becomes more richer, accessible, and healthier in every way. And at the end, society becomes a happy place for everyone. I have a, this is the last one example. A month ago, I went to a concert with my friends. This was a concert of a brand new singer. None of my friends knew her songs. Music was okay. Stuff is not something that we usually listen to. It was some kind of R&B in combination with the melodies that sound like folk music. And at one moment, one friend of mine, uh, she was literally shocked. She hated, she was against everything that came around, music, plays, everything. And she was just standing and observing, and her face obviously was saying, what am I doing here? And then came the song that I actually knew, and I started to dance and sing. Because I was so happy, it, it was a song that I know. <laughs> I will never, never forget her facial expression and reaction when she saw me dancing and singing. She leaned over the table and said, Ira, you are absolutely not deaf enough. Thank you.